Alrighty girly pops, today we're chatting about how to get from like your toxic situationship pattern to an actual healthy, beautiful relationship. Considering you clicked on this video, I assume that's what you want. And as someone who had a long, long pattern of just the same toxic situationships repeating all the time, and I'm now in like a healthy, beautiful, two year long relationship going strong, I know what it's like and how hard it is to break those habits i totally get you i'm a very problem solving type of a person so if i'm like these are the patterns that i'm experiencing this is where i want to go i'm like alrighty let's figure this out let's like i need a to-do list you know like i need actionable exercises steps just things to do so i tried a lot of things um not all of them are the best so i'm going to share with you the main takeaways like the things that if i went back to that place this is what i would do to get myself out of it and to break these patterns Alrighty, we've got a lot to cover here so let's just jump right in step number one and you're not going to want to hear this one trust me i know <laughs> it's not fun but get out of your victim narrative and take responsibility for your part i know your ex whoever we're dealing with here i know he was not great okay otherwise we wouldn't be here i get it and you can name all the traits you didn't like and that's going to help you to figure out what you want in the future that's all good and dandy but we also already know all those things you know the amount of times we've talked about them and everything that's wrong with them to our friends we all know okay so let's put that to the side for now and let's look at ourselves i get it the other tips you might prefer more but this is a crucial step you cannot change a pattern if you don't acknowledge what it is in the first place and considering that you are the person who's choosing these people there's obviously a part that you play if you were so happy and healthy and everything was great then as soon as someone would show you behavior that you don't like you'd be like okay <laughs> goodbye and that's not what we're doing and that's okay i've been <laughs> i've been there for many years so i get you there's no shame in that and i don't want you to shame yourself it's just about being able to see yourself realistically and i recently heard this tiktok and it was like women are either a victim or a villain and the ones who are a victim don't have the courage to be a villain i don't necessarily agree with that i think women are a lot more complex than just being those two things but let's just go with it for this scenario so what you want to do just look at yourself in your dating situationships or your past relationships and just play a little game of how was i the villain here like how was i the bad one and just kind of start getting comfortable with that idea that you were also the villain and sure you can tell yourself he was worse all right but again the more honest you are with yourself when it comes to this, the better off you'll be, the more you can actually work on these things. Because again, if you don't acknowledge a pattern or a problem, you can't really change it. Step number two, we're fine with like not being the Holy Mary, I'm like a victim here, I'm ready to see myself and like be a villain for a hot second and just see my own flaws. Now we need to actually uncover the patterns that we're dealing with here. Like, why are you choosing these people? Why are you acting in the toxic ways that you might be acting? We need to really get down and dirty and figure it out. So the first thing you need to understand is that we never do or choose something if it doesn't benefit us in some way. And this might be subconscious. You might not be aware of what the benefit is. And that's why we need to dig it up well, these are some personal examples that i'm a little bit embarrassed about but we're being honest here so here we go i used to choose um toxic partners and kind of like narcissists if we're honest and again i was like the victim i was like the poor girly who just kept being with these narcissists in all the toxic situationships that i was in the person who i was choosing was always very critical and the reason why i chose that and why it benefited me is because they were super critical of everyone and anything they had like a god complex but they liked me so i felt special and i definitely had a lot of issues with like my self-worth i thought why would anyone choose me so when someone was so critical but they chose me anyway i was like 
I'm finally special. Obviously they ended up being very critical towards me as well because that's just where they were at in their little journey. Also, for example, I rushed situationships. I didn't even give myself the time to get to know the person, to figure out if we're compatible, if I even like them. I was just like down for commitment straight away. And I was doing that to kind of create security straight away because subconsciously I was like, if this person takes the time to actually get to know me, they will not choose me. Because again, I had a lot of self-worth issues and I thought, why would anyone choose me? Like, why would anyone wanna be with me? You know, like I wouldn't wanna be with me. So you just need to ask yourself, like if I'm being honest with myself, why do I choose people who are super critical? And usually your brain will offer an answer. And usually the first thing that you think of is the right answer because it's before your brain kind of starts to overanalyze and you know complicate things journaling is really helpful here if you want to do this by yourself if you like don't want to go to therapy or cannot afford it or if you don't want to talk to people about this if you want to just keep it to yourself journaling is amazing you can also talk to yourself in the mirror like that is very very helpful it might seem a little weird but honestly you can really go deep with yourself through a mirror it's weird there are like a lot of mirror work psychological exercises out there so take advantage of your mirror girl try anything that works okay step number three let's actually gain awareness of who you are attracted to subconsciously because we all say like i want a partner who's stable i want someone who will love me who will listen to me and then we choose the complete opposite and we're like what is wrong with me nothing is wrong with you your subconscious mind pretty much rules your life so if you're not aware of what you are choosing and what you're subconsciously needing and what you're subconsciously attracted to it's not gonna make sense. The math is not gonna be mathing, you know? What you're gonna do is you're gonna write the names of people who really affected you. So this can be exes, situationships, a guy you went on three dates with, but really left a mark. It doesn't matter, no shame here. I used to be so embarrassed of like, oh, I, I was seeing this guy for a week and like it affected me so much, it's okay. We're not gonna judge, doesn't matter. <laughs> write their names down. And then you're gonna write a list below each name of their qualities, good and bad. You wanna name as many as possible. So you're gonna do that for each person separately. And then once you have all of them, you're gonna look at it and you're gonna circle the ones that keep repeating. Again, the positive and the negative. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a circle, have a little line going through it. And on top, you're gonna write the positive traits that kept repeating on those lists and then on the bottom the negative traits and that is your ghost partner and subconsciously these are the guys or the girls or whoever that you are choosing and this exercise helped me so much like they say that awareness of a problem is a problem half solved so you just being aware of this pattern and then once you meet someone and you have that like connection you're like chat you're familiar you know, you're exactly like my little circle that I drew. And usually these are the people that you have a lot of chemistry towards, like the people that you feel that initial like intense spark, you know? And then you need to be really clear about what has been the outcome of all of these relationships where they represented that ghost partner. So all the ones you wrote down that had like repeated qualities, how did it end? What did you get out of it? And usually it's not good. <laughs> usually it didn't make you feel good. Um, it ended badly. It left you even more scars like it just wasn't a fun time Maybe it was at the beginning and that's why it's difficult because you're like but It's so spicy and fun at the beginning girl. I know I know I, I really get it That was the hardest part for me like am I just not meant to have fun? No, that's not it <laughs> But yeah, you do want to get clear about what has this pattern ever given you? I knew that when I broke up with my last like toxic ex situationship whatever i was like i cannot keep doing this anymore because it's giving me the same result over and over and over again and you continuing doing the same thing and expecting different results is insanity let's just be honest <laughs> it is insanity and like nothing's going to change if you're going to keep choosing these people so you need to get very clear on why you do not want this anymore if you do want this if you look at this and you're like yeah that's what i want i want chemistry i want chaos go for it who am i to stop you do what makes you happy but if you're here and you're like i don't want this anymore i want a stable happy relationship that makes me feel good where we can communicate and grow together and 
help each other and be there for each other then you're gonna have to realize that continuing to choose these exact same people and these patterns is not gonna give you what you want step number four you need to realize that extremely high chemistry does not equal this is the person for you it usually means it's gonna be really toxic and this is something that my therapist taught me and I was never the same afterwards because I genuinely thought that when I met someone and we had that like insanely high chemistry and it was so exciting and sparks were flying and it was like that ad addictive feeling it was like crack to me <laughs> like i thought this is my person obviously why would i experience this kind of a connection if it wasn't my person that doesn't make any sense usually it is a trauma bond or just like just your regular toxic situation ship. the reason why so we obviously all have trauma from our childhood usually it comes from our caregivers our parents so i'll just give you one example so let's say you had a dad who was really hard working and all you wanted from him was just some attention and some love and you could just never get it he was working all the time he didn't have time for you obviously that is painful and now you're basically choosing partners so these like 10 out of 10 chemistry people who you have this insane connection with that are basically making you feel exactly the same as your dad made you feel. So you're just scraping for some love and attention. And at first it feels really explosive and this is why. So number one, it feels safe because your brain is like, this is familiar. Like I know what I'm getting myself into and I know exactly kind of the outcome usually. And number two, and the most important one, your subconscious mind is like, aha, <laughs> we have an option here to override that first experience. So obviously my dad made me feel like I'm not lovable. And so now I basically chose someone who's exactly the same way and I'm gonna prove to myself that he will love me and therefore I am lovable. So what you wanna feel like when you go on a date, cause this was very confusing to me. I was like, okay, if I don't have that insane chemistry, like is it just gonna be like boring? And then I started dating and I was like, just choosing people that I had no chemistry with and I was just forcing something because on paper they were good for me no that is not what we're doing we want chemistry still we want like attraction we want to feel excited about the person that we're meeting of course so if that like toxic kind of trauma bond situation is like a 9 or a 10 out of 10 on a chemistry scale you want like a 7 or an 8 that's your sweet spot and if that doesn't make sense to you like practically when you go on a date how you want to feel is enjoy the conversation obviously enjoy the person in front of you you do feel attracted towards them like if they went in to kiss you you wouldn't be like you know you would want to participate because <laughs> again we want that attraction in chemistry that is natural and needed for a relationship and on the date you usually feel very at ease you feel totally yourself you're relaxed your body is relaxed it is just a totally different feeling and when you come home from a date you're like i'm intrigued i want to know more about this person but you're not like obsessed it's not that like addiction feeling that those toxic things give you and i know at the beginning you'll have to like reframe your mind it's not boring you're just addicted to chaos and you just want to create chaos for yourself to feel safe because a lot of us grew up in chaos and so when things are calm you're like am i supposed to just sit here and enjoy myself it feels weird i know but you'll get used to it trust me step number five this is something that i did and i stand by is i decided to be single for a whole year you don't have to do a whole year you can do three months a month whatever works for you but this is a time where you are single on purpose like you've decided this you're not even thinking about being in relationships or meeting people you're totally focusing on yourself so you're going to take this time to really work through these patterns of yours consume all the material you can find there's podcasts there are youtube videos i'm going to be posting way more also let me know if you want a podcast in the future i feel like there's so many so i'm just like is it necessary i don't know there are so many books i'll link my like amazon storefront with my favorite Books to kind of work on yourself and just take this time to date yourself that is kind of the thing that I kept repeating to myself I am gonna date myself like imagine your perfect relationship your perfect boyfriend girlfriend whoever and think of the things they would do for you or the things you would do together and start to kind of do that by yourself or do that for yourself obviously 
you can't do it all by yourself i get it but the majority of things you can find a way to do it by yourself so if you want your boyfriend to bring you flowers on a day when you feel sad when you're sad go out and buy yourself flowers if you want your partner to ask you how your day was ask yourself like when you come home stand in the mirror and be like how was your day nika and just answer yourself like just start doing things for yourself that your perfect partner would will do for you and what happens when you treat yourself in this kind of a way is that your standards just naturally increase without you trying to change them because you feel so good <laughs> by yourself and then you get to a point and this is where i got to where i was like i am not going back to those toxic situationships because i feel so much better now and why would i jeopardize that and my happiness and my relationship with myself that I've built and worked so hard on for something that's not gonna give me what I want it's not gonna make me feel good about myself like why would I do that like when I would go on a date I would notice within like 15 minutes um, if this is the kind of person I used to date you really start to clock it so quickly and then you need to just be really strong in yourself to be like no we're not going there and it can be hard because a lot of the times you have so much chemistry with those people and it's like exciting and you're like ha ah, i'm getting the high again and you just need to be like no nika this is, this is not what we want like we want xyz and stuff and also when you're kind of working on yourself and your relationship and you're doing all these nice things for yourself focusing on your happiness whatever you want to call it it's like a perfect time to also kind of get a little bit more clear on what you want and i don't want you to limit yourself just write like this is how i want to feel i want my partner to be able to work through our issues together i want them to want me in the way i want them just those deeper things not like i want them to look like this i want them to be a graphic designer like don't limit yourself like that just really get granular on the things that you want when it comes to how you want to feel in the relationship um because that's the most important thing at the end of the day and so then you will start to kind of vet people when you go on dates you're like okay i don't want you because you're exactly the pattern that i'm trying to avoid i do maybe want you but we'll see because i need to like figure out if you can give me what i want because i feel so good in myself that i'm not just gonna date anyone why would i ruin my happiness <laughs> and it really increases your standards and you start to feel really good and dating becomes way less confusing i know what i want your boundaries are stronger you just are more sure of yourself and that also makes you way more attractive trust me <laughs> just a little honorable mention i really recommend you looking into attachment theory and figuring out what your attachment style is i'll link a quiz that i did down below because if you're not in therapy and if you don't have the funds to start therapy or if it's just not for you um, I feel like attachment theory is a really kind of easy way to figure out what your patterns are because it's very nicely packaged <laughs> and then um, if you find like good content about it it also gives you kind of ways on how to start shifting your attachment style to a secure attachment which is like that healthy attachment that we all want so um, I'll link one down below after you get your results it also has like a video explaining your attachment style so it's really simple this is not sponsored at all it's just something that i did and was really really helpful for me so alrighty guys that is all for this video i genuinely really hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful i know how difficult and like frustrating it can be to be stuck in those kinds of patterns it's hard to change it really is most of the time um and there's also just like a sea of information out there of all the things you can do and it can be hard to kind of pick and choose the ones that are actually going to make a difference and help you in like a positive way so i hope that me choosing the tips that really really genuinely helped me the most are going to help you also and i can't wait to see you in my next video let me know if you want my next video to be more about like dating and kind of dating rules um to just pick the right person and have fun and be yourself and have an amazing time um, and I will gladly do that. Alrighty, have a great day guys, and I will see you soon. Bye!